This is how to use Photoshop 101 for beginners. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to get started out with Photoshop if you're completely new to Photoshop and don't have a cooking clue what it is. Alright, so let's get right away into it. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've got a dark gray version here of Photoshop. Yours might be in a light gray version. This also depends on what type of Photoshop version you have. So if you have a light gray version, it might be that you have CS4, CS5 or even something earlier than that. If yours is dark gray like mine, it might be that you have CS6 or CC again, a newer version of Photoshop. Now when you start out with Photoshop, you don't need to have the best program out there from Photoshop and the newest version. You can literally start out with CS4, CS5 or CS6 and just get slowly into the software. But if you do want to upgrade in a future stage and become better in Photoshopping, I would suggest going over to CS6 and CC because you just have more tools, better tools, better options and more filters and stuff and everything is obviously a bit more upgraded with this software. So it's essential to maybe then go over. But for the start, it's fine where you are. Okay, so I want to talk about all these buttons that we have and options and things on Photoshop. It's so confusing what is where. So if you're completely new, this must be super confusing. Okay, so what I want to do is actually switch everything off so we have nothing on our background on our desktop here and we can start simply step by step explaining what is what. So I'm going to go to Window, say Options Art, Tools, you guys will see that slowly things will disappear here on my screen and I'm just really rushing through this, cancel everything and you guys will see that I'm just left now with my image here on Photoshop, nothing else. I'm going to also even go and say Cancel and we are out, this is not part of it and again you will see that we are out of the software now, we are back on the Mac background here. This is pretty much the same as well for Windows computers. Now if I'm going to go all the way down and select Photoshop, you will see that I will just have a gray version behind me and in the top here is just obviously a little bit of an option bar there again in the top. So this means you are now in Photoshop. If I'm going to go a step further and say application frame off, there will be nothing. So it's literally just the software here in the top. So don't get confused, you are still in Photoshop but you just deleted your complete workspace on your desktop. So now we're going to call up things slowly and talk around this stuff. I'm going to first of all go and take an image here, drag that into Photoshop. You guys can also find these work materials again attached to every single lesson. Just have a look under the download section. So now we added again our image here into Photoshop. I'm going to move that into the center and you guys can see I'm still in Photoshop. Okay, great. Now, next step that we need to do is basically go to Window and accept here the application frame. Now, I actually like to work without the application frame, so it's switched off always because I can switch really quickly between Photoshop and the actual Mac software, obviously with the computer. So I can just click onto the background, have a look here at the top, it switches back to the Mac options or back onto the image and I'm back in Photoshop. If you have the application frame on, you're literally like in a software. You will always need to minimize the program and then always call up the program, go down, wherever, like here, and call the program up again. So this obviously depends on you. But if you work a lot with Photoshop and have it open the whole day, it's easy to switch quickly between things like this. So I like to actually keep application frame off. But for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it on now. Great, so let's continue to the next step. I'm going to go to Window and switch on Tools at the bottom. So again, Tools over here, I'm going to drag it out. You will see that over here we have this thing which is called Tools. It's a toolbar with all the tools that you need to work with in Photoshop. So this tutorial lesson here is not all about the tools, but this is mainly just the bar in which you will have all the tools that you will need to work with in Photoshop. So again, you can also take it and you can put it on to the left hand side, just wait till the blue line appears, or again if you want to on the right side as well. But I like to actually keep it to the left side and it normally sticks here and it's always here on my left side. So again, these are all the Photoshop tools that we have. Then right away at the top, we're still missing an option bar. If we're going to go to Window and say Options, 
you will see we have a new option bar here at the top or a new bar with options. Now I'm currently in the move tool. This means all the options here are just for the move tool. If I'm going to switch over maybe to the zoom tool, which is down here, you will see that everything changes again. So these little features here in the top are actually little extensions for every single tool. So if you want to change or adjust your tool or uh, fine tune or retweak your tool, you can do so here at the top. If I'm going to go to the marking tool, you will see this changes again. So again, I can now work with this tool but have different options for that certain tool. So this is just for the tools. Now, on our right hand side here, we have a workspace, but it's not there yet, right? We've canceled everything. So this is the area which you will need because you will work with this all the time in Photoshop. Now at the beginning you don't need every single box that you will see in Photoshop. It's just super confusing. You will only need a few ones. And once you upgrade with Photoshop, see better tutorials, see other people work for, with Photoshop, you will learn new things. And as well you will maybe think, okay, I need that toolbox now as well because I like to work in that way. But for the beginning structure, it's super, super simple. To structure this workspace, you have to go back to Window. And in here, you will find all your workspaces and your uh, boxes and panels, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So basically, I'm going to call it Actions now. So I'm going to have Actions here, but I actually just want to have History. So History at the beginning, super important just to go steps back when you Photoshop. I'm going to actually take this and cancel that out completely so we just have the history panel open now. Then back to window I'm going to go to layers super important everybody needs layers. Again I'm going to drag that out it's actually another box over here as you guys can see and it's super big let's make this a bit smaller again we're going to wait till the blue line appears so over here we have layers again. Also down here a few more options don't get confused now with this this is a bit more advanced, the tools which you can use in the future use of Photoshop. For the beginning, just concentrate on layers and your history now. One more box that you will maybe need here, Window, you will need Navigator. Especially if you're new to Photoshop, Navigator comes in really handy. You will need Properties and Adjustments. Okay, so all of these make up three boxes here, make up one box. I'm going to drag everything into one box. So we've got adjustments, the properties for the adjustments, and the navigator. So this is again easy to zoom in and out in the beginning of Photoshop stage. But I would really encourage you guys to start learning Photoshop shortcuts on the keyboard. So you, if I'm going to press Z now, for instance, it takes me right away into the zoom tool. So I don't need navigator anymore. If I'm going to press V on the keyboard, it takes me into the move tool. So it's super easy and also good to know your uh, Photoshop shortcuts here on the keyboard. Now let's also get back to our workspace. I'm going to move that back here into the top and also layers as well. So you can structure it in any way that you like, guys. I'm going to cancel this quickly and take all of this and move it to the right hand side and that will clip right away here onto the right hand side. So this means you've got a few options there now to work in with Photoshop. Again, if you also feel comfortable like this, go to the top here, go all the way to New, and just save this again. Maybe give it a name, also say the keyboard shortcuts and the menus, please. And save this workspace so when you next time open Photoshop, it will look the same. Great, so now you've got your workspace. Also, let's maybe quickly talk about this. Um, I'm going to double click on here and just show you guys a few features. I don't want to talk about all of this. We've got tons of tutorials where I'm talking in depth about all these options. I'm going to go open a new layer. You guys directly you see in the history panel something happened here and we also have a new layer now. If I'm going to go to the brush tool with B on my keyboard and just with white color paint on here. Okay, so that has happened now on the single layer. I can obviously turn it off and on. This is more about layers. We don't want to talk about that now. What I want to talk about is here in the history panel, you guys can see that this step has been recorded. So I can literally go a step back now or again another step back and just cancel out these layers. So that's why I use history here at the top. Again, layers, we need to work with layers. You'll notice more about layers once you go through more lessons. Then again, we've got navigator, properties, and adjustments. Now, I'm going to talk about adjustments in a second. 
right away we're going to go to the top here which is again a more options just for Photoshop itself so first of all about Photoshop updating the software new things preferences all of these things you don't need to worry about that in the beginning then file again like every software you can open uh, images you can import new images you can browse and bridge if you have that you can save and close so always save over here as well import export all of that stuff print pretty much the same like every software then we also have edit over here again to edit certain things just for that certain layer or again image or currently canvas that you're working on so as you guys can see transform this stuff change to PDF a few more options here color settings etc not too much about that you need to know right now back to image in here this is all part of just this image that you're working on and it will only work on this image now as you guys can see here right away we have adjustments and we also have a panel here adjustments hmm so why is that why do we need this adjustments if we have adjustments here ready well these adjustments if I'm gonna go to levels maybe you guys will see that levels pops up and over here I can just darken things again hit OK and this will be applied right away now to this layer 0 so this means if I'm going to continue my photoshopping work steps later I can't cancel this step out because it was directly applied to this image so Photoshop is giving you a few options here again I'm going to go step back in the history panel to get my image back to normal that's why we have adjustments as well over here Photoshop is giving you another option of working with adjustments over here you can go to levels and these adjustments are called adjustment level layers or adjustment layers so now we obviously in levels so that's why I said adjustment levels layer now I can darken this a bit and I can go back to adjustments and continue my photoshopping process but these things that happen now with the darkening here happen just on an individual layer so again I can turn this on and off in between whenever I want to I can just hit delete and delete it again so don't get confused there that we have options and adjustments here and under these options again adjustments over here so Photoshop is giving you a couple of different ways to approach things you can either do adjustments over here you can do adjustments over here you can do adjustments over here the same with you can create new layers from here also you can create new layers from the top so don't get confused Photoshop is building a lot of different ways that you can work quicker and use a comfortable workflow that you really like okay we right away at layers as well at the top you guys can see again new layers we can do certain things with layers like group layers hide layers and smart objects convert them so again all of these options here are sometimes also available if you hit right click on a certain layer as you guys can also see here so again Photoshop is giving you a few certain work directions that you can use again with Photoshop let's also continue over here we've got type again if you have lots of things with uh, typing like rasterize the type layer or if you want to work just with your text individually warp it all of that type stuff are up here if you have selections everything from selections are up here again so you have many different options for that filters again many different filters from also a filter gallery external Photoshop plugins which are listed down here and the normal Photoshop filters something like maybe blur Gaussian blur okay and this will also obviously be applied again directly to a certain layer so this is not another option here at the top for that you need to change your layers I'm gonna quickly show you guys that hit right click say convert to a smart object don't get confused now you don't need to remember this step you will learn about that in the future I'm just showing you guys something quickly filter blur Gaussian blur again okay but you'll see this step will be now as an external step on that layer as down here so I can still turn that off again so again you can work in many different ways in Photoshop now let's also get back to view again view is for all the things that you actually see on your screen like for instance at the beginning we had rulers here but now they are gone so we can actually go to view rulers and right away you will have rulers in Photoshop so now with rulers if you also go to the move tool you can actually pull down guidelines to help you to work with your image or whatever you're designing or you're doing in Photoshop 
also if you go back to view at the top you can also say here new guides say for instance 50 percent okay and right away in the center vertically we have a 50 percent guide now maybe view back again clear guides and all the guides are out so again under view many different things to zoom in and out fit on screen maybe um, you know everything that you actually see then with window everything that we opened was through the window tab here so again our options bar at the top the tools our workspace everything that we have comes from over here also if you have saved any of your workspaces again this or if you want to arrange certain things you can also do so over here play a little bit with Photoshop it is really meant to be playing at the beginning so you understand what are you actually doing in Photoshop before you go into the photoshopping process before you even do something with Photoshop play with this interface then as well help over here obviously to get more online support help things like usually with every program you can also search there for certain things so you can read up how certain things work um, yeah just another help feature over here so yeah guys this was all about this lesson understanding again how this whole Photoshop interface and workspace works in the next lessons we're going to talk more in depth about all the tools layers adjustments everything that you need to know about Photoshop yeah great so again like I mentioned before please go into this program and play with it play around you will get more comfortable once you know all of these things and you will also feel more comfortable with your normal Photoshop one last thing that I want to show is go back to window application frame and you guys will get the point now so you will see that only my image is over here I can now switch to the background and continue working and go back to Photoshop so it's super handy for me great so that was all thanks again guys for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel and share it with all your buddies thanks again for watching guys see you all in the next tutorial bye bye